<laughs> All right, guys, we're going to move straight into uh, keeping the main thing the main thing. And for keeping the, for this segment this week, I'm really excited because uh, we just came off of talking about King David's greatest legacy, which was not being the giant slayer. Turns out it was walking mm. in the repentance of God mm -hmm. after he became a uh, murderous, adultering, just douchebag. I mean, talk, yeah, about, talk yeah. about a Jody. Oh, like you know what a, you know what Jody is, right? It's uh, a military thing. No, but jo I, Jody's, Jody's using it in that context. I can kind of get a good okay, idea. Well, jo Jody's <laughs> the dude that's screwing your girl mm. while, while you're serving your mm -hmm. country overseas, okay. right? So, and, and that's what King David did. I mean, the Abs whole the whole bit. He goes home. So anyway, go back and watch. Uh, the last two episodes, King David's Greatest Legacy. Well, we got a lot of really good comments on uh, those two episodes, and you guys seem to really enjoy uh, talking about how David... It's not my fault you didn't get enough coffee. I, yeah. You should have planned that. I do. I do. It's like, man, I got a sip left. So what we're, gonna, we're going to keep with this theme, and we're going to do several weeks... Uh, through here into the fall, marching uh, closer to Christmas, we're going to talk about the Bible's greatest screw-ups. Screw-ups and failures. Screw-ups and failures. Okay. All right. right? All right. Uh, so coming off of King David, which was a pretty big one. That's uh, huge. Yeah. That's I want to I want to go straight to a screw-up that like knew Jesus himself. Okay. Like was was there there, and this is another guy that had it all. Was was up here, and then like when the moment came, just like failed, just failed. Okay, and I and I mean failed. failed. Where are we going? I want to talk about Peter, <laughs> Simon, Simon Peter. Okay, before right? you go any further, let me throw this out about the two that we are talking about uh, uh, simultaneously: David and Peter. Sure. Okay, Old Testament, New Testament. The the concept behind both of them is actually an encouragement to men that God is the God of second chances. Absolutely. That is the whole point of their lives is to encourage men. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, maybe four or six now, um, somewhere in there, I was doing a sermon on Sunday morning. And by the way, can I put out a spiel? Yeah. A, 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 a thing? I'll uh, just post edit it out later, so it's fine. Oh, okay, great. Um, <laughs> if you're online and you need a place to worship, yeah. join us on Sunday morning at the Journey wc.org. Uh, journeys capitalized, J-O-U-R-N-E-Y-W-C dot org. When you go there on Sunday mornings, 1030 Central Time, if you don't have a place to worship, join me on, on Sunday mornings. Worship with us. Catch the scripture lesson that we do there. And we'll be sure to uh, to link the, the journey below okay. the video. So and anyway, so so about six weeks ago, I, I was speaking and I was talking about the way that we should be doing something in our current life. And then I, I went on and two or three people came to me afterwards on Sunday morning and they said, man, I'm, I'm a failure at this and I'm a failure at that. And I realized that as I was speaking about the way that we should be, and these are older people that have done left that part of their life, and I made them feel like a failure because their lives, I was talking about family, I was talking about children, and every one of them were like, man, wow. I did not do well in family. I did not do well with children. And I didn't do, and I'm not doing well with grandkids and, and blah, blah, blah. And that's, and, that's, and it, that's rough. It, it is. And, and, and then they look at my family and I have a lot to celebrate with you he's guys. Got a, he's got a pretty, pretty decent lineup of children. Just so. I do. I do. I am, <laughs> I'm proud of you guys. And you I guys have made, my shoulder, patting myself on the back. made me proud of you. Um, <laughs> But spiritually, it's this, as we get ready to go in to talk to Peter, uh, about Peter, as we talked about David, whatever God is dealing with you about, and what we may talk about in, in your spiritual walk, your spiritual life, what has happened is in the past, and I want to say this to you, I want to say this to other people that I have been ministering to, this has come back to my mind, that stuff is in the past. God wants you to start where you are right now. 
even though it's in the past, one of the great things that we can get from David, from Peter, from all these failures that we're about ready to talk about is that God has an incredible way. Don't let your failures beat you down or cause you to step out of the race. In fact, God wants you to start where you are right now. And since he is God, he is the God of time. And he's got this incredible thing where he can add back time. Don't know how he does it. It's not in my realm of being able to do. But the thing of it is, is you got to start where you are and you got to do it. You, you can't just sit alongside the road and go, that's it. I'm done. It's over. And yeah, I might as well just give up. That's defeatism. Don't give in to it. Start where you are and things can turn around. God can change all kinds of things. Now, back back to Peter. I yeah, just wanted to get that said. So you run No, I'm, I'm glad that you said that. And that's precisely why I wanted to do the the screw ups of the Bible, because it's like so many times I think we we put the characters of the Bible, especially the men of the Bible on a pedestal. Uh, and so it's like, no, don't you get, you know, they're, 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 this is one of the things that also proves the veracity of the Bible in my mind, because yes, if you really absolutely. were, if you really were going to go back uh, and you can compare it to other holy texts that are, that are out there, if, <laughs> if, texts, if you yeah. want sacred texts that are out there, and what you'll see is when you have texts that are written about things that are in the past, right, and, and people have the ability to post-edit, I made the post-editing joke earlier, then why would you ever leave something in writing that makes you look like a failure? Why would you do that? It makes it makes no sense. I only want my uh, reputation to be to be bolstered and to be seen. But here here in the Bible, we have so many examples of men are the ones that I'm going to call out for you guys out there that are just holy cow. You know that dude fell flat on his yeah, face, yeah. and it's recorded for us. And, and I want to present that to you guys just for that reason, so that way. First of all, there's a little bit of, okay, thank God, I'm not doing that bad. Peter? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Which, oh, makes, yeah. which makes a big difference. And then the other you thing. You know, we too, could go two weeks on it, Peter. We could. Easy. Right? But the other thing, too, is I want you guys to see uh, the redeeming power of God in some of these stories. Mm -hmm. and that's why I'm pulling them out. So, Peter, uh, this guy goes, uh, again, I mean, you just talk about feeling and falling flat on his face. I got my BibleGateway.com pulled up here, guys, on my phone. Uh, again, they don't sponsor us, but it's just an awesome tool, and I want you guys to know about it so you can do your Bible studies on the fly. Uh, this is going to be in Luke uh, chapter 22, beginning in verse 54, uh, and I'm going to read through verse 62. Before just you get started, up, yeah. here you go. Here's the setup. They were just all in a room together. Jesus says, I'm going to die. And Peter's like, oh, no, God, you're, Jesus, you're not going to die. I, I will stand in the way. You're not going to die. And he's I'll like, go, I'll go with you. You want to know, know how bad it's going to be, Peter? <laughs> Peter, it's going to be so bad that before this night is over, you're going to deny me three that you even know me three times. I would never. Oh, no, Lord, I'd never do that. that. All right. Grab Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. They take him away. Peter follows from afar well, off. Uh, he tries to cut the dude's ear off. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, and which, and which Jesus is, heals that. Yeah. But Peter follows from afar off watching the trial. It goes inside. The trial does. Peter is outside in the court. Yeah. Well, and, and I, and I want to shine a spotlight on that for just a second because I want to show like the two sides of, of Peter's personality because he was the disciple that when they went to go grab Jesus was like ready to go. He was ready to fight. Ready to go fist. He cross. grabbed a sword. He grabbed a sword. He was ready to fight. He lobs that dude's ear off like he was ready to take somebody else's life for the Christ, which is very important, right? Which is the, what would be considered like the traditional masculine thing to do. Mm -hmm. He was ready to take it to the mat. Yeah. But then when Jesus said, put down the sword, uh, there's that famous quote of Jesus where he says, those who live by the sword will also well, die, die by, by the, the sword. sword. He heals the guy's ear. And then and then Peter- And yet that's all then, adrenaline. So let's uh, give sure. everybody, and adrenaline then, is just running. Yeah. So now you but got then, the adrenaline he, down. Right, and he slinks to the back and, and, and follows from afar to follow to where they go to Christ. So gone is the Peter of like two chapters ago that was uh, that was ready to, to fight to blows. But what happens when adrenaline falls? Sure. Okay, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's what a, we that's got. That's a good point. So 
that, that's the setup for where we're at now, right? So having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. Now, when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, this man was also with him. Say. Yeah. <laughs> but he denied him, saying, woman, woman, I do not know him. So that's one, right? And after a little while, another saw him and said, no, you are also one of them. Or you are also of them, excuse me. Don't ever want to take the, or add or take mm -hmm. away from the Bible. But Peter said, man, I am not. <laughs> then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. They had Here an accent. It's always your accent. It is an accent. Always gives you away. But Peter said, man, <clears throat> I do not know what you are saying. Immediately while he was still speaking. While he was still speaking. The rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he had said to him before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Right? So it all comes down to it. Right? And there, so, so there, there's this other thing, too, when you go back and you read the Gospels uh, of what's going on during Jesus' trial. Right, and and they're you know he's probably getting roughed up. He's getting questioned. He's stand, standing before the religious leaders of the Jewish community. These are the these are the big the big bad dudes, uh, and they're bringing in lots of people to uh, to have false witnesses testimony against him and, and accusing him of all these bad things. And it's bad. Right? It it's bad because they're setting up there. to getting killed. Right, they know and that's that's the entire point. The and point. they got to build a case big enough, right, so that they can take him before the 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 Rome. Oh, I've thought about the Roman Empire today. <laughs> before the Roman uh, leadership there in Jerusalem and order his death. And so Peter can obviously hear what's going on. He can see what's going on. Um, and under the stress of that situation, or the situation, you know, everything's is spiraling. Peter absolutely cracks. And I mean, I mean cracks, like give like gives it all away. I think that there's another version of the story in I know there's one in Mark, and I, I believe that there's one in Matthew as well where they talk about I think this. So. Well I think I I think it says that that he swears at them. Mm -hmm. Like he, cur he, curse he curses he curses and says, I, I do not know him, right? Yeah. Like I don't know him. You know, how uh how lonely, how lonely do you think that would make you? You know, if, if somebody that you know that your entire your entire life, like a like a me or something like that, and in the moment where you're just like at the lowest of your low, and also Jesus knows that he's getting ready to die, you know, and so there's a it, like it doesn't matter that he's it, who can't say that it doesn't matter that he's God, but it's like he's also a human being and he is getting ready to die because he was he was tried in all ways like us. He went through everything that we have to go through. So. The stress of him dying just a couple chapters ago had his blood pressure so high. I've seen people at like two twenty. That's yet to come. At two twenty and two forty, that that didn't actually bleed, like their capillaries weren't breaking open. Jesus is so stressed out. He's so he's stressed out. blood. That uh, it's know. a type of dropsy they call it. Yeah. It's your capillaries rupture yeah. and and you sweat yeah. blood. Uh, and I just said that wrong. That's right. It was prior because that was in the garden. Hemo, hemo. Uh, I'll come. Yeah, head, but it's in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, I, 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 as far as Christ goes, this is part of the broken heart. His love for his disciples is so great that... Hemophoretic. There, there you go. Uh, his love for his disciples is so great that knowing that he's going to do it is no comfort to him. And, and this is the stress of what he was praying for in the Garden. Okay, um, not my will, but yours be done. And and three times he goes back, and the disciples are sleeping, and and he keeps telling, "Can't you wait with me for just one hour? Come on, yeah. guys, come on, guys. I I need this." And okay, if it was a if it was a Ranger Patrol base, he would have like lit off the two forty. Is that would have been okay? Um, <laughs> Can't you guys pull security for one hour? And I'm and I and that one thing that it says in there uh, that he glances across the courtyard and. And yeah. if you see this in um, the uh, the Passion of the Christ, 
he's his eye is swollen it's black he's in chains and he has to walk really funny he's been beaten um he's been up all night and through his one eye that he can see out of he just turns around and there's peter by the fire and they they make that eye contact i'm just i'm i'm wondering like how that is heart wrenching to me how lonely the one guy you know he had one guy in that whole courtyard that was supposed to be like his boy like i would die. just just a couple hours ago i would die for you before i'd let them do anything to you mm. and then to turn around and like i'm telling you dang it i don't know him Dag, that's got to be and then, and then well and then they look at each other and and peter knows you know, it was like, I just, I, like, he's looking at the, I, I just stabbed him, him. In, in right the back. in the back. In the back. You know, and so no. then he, and then he goes out, right, and, and he, he weeps bitterly. Peter is at the foot of the cross. He's one of the three. No, he's not. John is. Only John. Only John. Well, which would make, which would make sense because if he's denied Christ, do you think that he could even bring himself to go see him? crucified to actually see him die after I, after I, I said I was... said I didn't know you and right when you needed a witness to stand up for you. The most, yeah. I said, yeah. I don't even know you. So this is what we're going to do, just like with uh, King David. <laughs> we're going to leave, we're going to leave Peter, we're going to leave Peter in this... Yeah, because we, we, we've gone over here it's because be it's such a great pit, story. But, but Yeah, it's we're going to leave Peter in this pit. This, this is bad. I mean, it's, 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 it's a bad as, spot. It's just as bad as, as David. Yeah. It's just as bad as David because, you know, David did this to his best friend. Peter did it to the Lord. Yeah, and his best friend. <laughs> Will you call me your best friend? Right. Oh, and then when when And then when, when I had needed you, 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 yeah. were, you were gone. Yeah. So we're going to come back next week. Bible's Greatest Screw-Ups. This is going to be week number four because I didn't realize we were starting it with uh, King David's Lake. Yeah! But it'll be the Bible's Greatest Screw-Ups week four, and we're going to talk about Peter's redemption and how he makes his way back, uh, back from this because it's a pretty incredible story in which – I don't Actually, want to give too much away, but in the manner that he denied Jesus, Jesus face to face gives him the opportunity to make And it in right. a lot of ways, a lot of us have this story. Yeah. 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 Good yeah. to be with you this week. Hey, okay. it's it's really good to be here. So I tell you guys what, uh, if you like these these Bible studies, uh, make sure that you're giving the video a thumbs up. Make sure you guys are getting subbed up or a follow, depending on where you found us. Yeah. And the algorithms, guys, they do not like us. We talk way too much about Jesus. So the only <laughs> way that this channel is going to grow is with your help and with your support. So, so help us. Share the video with a friend. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast this week, and we will catch you guys next week on Common Freaking Sense. See you then.